Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, we're going to explain what a basic household circuit looks like and how it functions. In every home, there's typically a place where the electricity from outside, from the street, comes to the home and goes into what we call a breaker panel. The current that runs into your breaker panel gets subdivided into a number of smaller circuits. Each circuit is protected by a circuit breaker, which is rated at a particular current. 15 amps or 20 amps are very typical circuit breakers. Which other words, when you start plugging appliances into your circuit, then you will limit how much current is allowed to come through the circuit because they want to keep the circuit safe. If the current draw is too great, then the wires could heat up to the point where you could actually start a house fire. So you want to prevent that. In other words, if the current demanded by the appliances that you hook up onto your circuit exceeds what is allowed by the circuit breaker, the circuit breaker will what we call trip and current will simply stop flowing. It simply opens up the circuit and no more current is allowed to flow. So notice that we all usually have multiple circuits running into the house and there'll be a limited number of outlets or switches attached to it so that you're not, that you're being prevented from from hooking up or inserting too many appliances, too many light bulbs, too many things that might overload that particular circuit. So the way they do that is they limit the number of outlets you can have on a particular circuit. Most building codes probably something like six, seven or eight uh, for the, the maximum. And also depends upon what we expect to, to use those circuits for. Now here we have an example where this particular circuit, we hook up a vacuum cleaner, which is rated at, a, at 11 amps. Most vacuum cleaners, when you purchase them, it'll tell you what the current draw will be for the vacuum cleaner. It requires a certain amount of power to operate the motor in the vacuum cleaner, so they tell you, well, it'll draw 11 amps. 11 amps is less than 15 amps, so that should be not a problem by hooking up your vacuum cleaner. But what if, you, what if you now also hook up a toaster to the very same circuit? And toasters are typically rated in terms of watts, how much power they need. So it's a little bit different from amps. So the question may be, well, how much current will the toaster draw? And can you operate the toaster and the vacuum cleaner at the same time on the same circuit? Well, there's two equations to calculate the power. One equation is the power provided by a circuit is equal to the current times the voltage. The other equation is the power consumed or dissipated by the load, and that is typically equated to be I squared times R. So let's go ahead and use the equation, the power provided is the current times the voltage. Well, most household circuits, they work off 120 volts. So when we then calculate the power provided for the toaster, we can say that the power is equal to I times V, or I, the current, is equal to the power divided by the voltage. Now in this case, we're told that the power for the toaster is 600 watts, so it would be 600 watts divided by the voltage, which is 120 volts. Well, what is 600 watts divided by 120 volts? Well, that looks like it's five amps. Now here is a problem. If we're going to plug in the toaster and operate it, it's going to draw a current of five amps. At the same time, we also have the vacuum, vacuum cleaner plugged in and we're vacuuming at the same time, and that will be rated at 11 amps. 11 amps plus five amps together is 16 amps, which is greater than the amount allowed by the circuit breaker, and the circuit breaker will trip as soon as you try to operate the vacuum cleaner and operate the toaster at the same time. It's simply a safety mechanism. So what you would need to do then is take your toaster and hook it up to another circuit so that you only draw 5 amps of current through this circuit and 11 amps of current through that circuit. That's how they protect us from overloading the circuits. Now also notice that if nothing is plugged into the circuit, no lights are turned on or nothing is plugged in, then no current will flow to the circuit. Every one of these outlets is basically an open in the circuit and the way you allow current to flow through the circuit is to actually plug something in so that the current will run through the device back into the other side and back to the circuit breaker. So you have current flowing in one direction and current flowing back in the other direction. Of course, in real life, the current that we usually have is AC current, alternating current that goes back and forth, but for us it's simply enough to just imagine that we have current flowing in one direction and then back in the other direction. We have a high and a low, 
and so we have a potential difference and so we have current flow only when you plug devices in when devices are not plugged in like we have in the top circuit there's no current flow at all and so that's how basic household circuits work they have circuit breakers that protect us against an overload that can happen when you plug in too many appliances that draw too much current and simply said that the current drawn in each circuit or the current required to operate in each is simply the current sum of all the devices that you plug into the circuit. And that's the basics of household circuits.